The New York Mets are not going to do a long-term rebuild. Instead, they're going to try and compete in 2019. Find out how they could actually do this next. What's going on, guys? I'm Matt O'Leary, back with another video. I apologize. I know I've been away for a really long time. And to be honest with you, I just fell off track with it. I do work full-time. I do write for two other websites. So this is a passion of mine don't get me wrong but sometimes it gets put on the back burner but i wanted to come back and do another video and today with this information that came out about my mets i thought it'd be a good time to make a video so the interim general manager rico came out and said that the new york mets are not going to do a long-term rebuild meaning they're not going to part ways with Noah Syndergaard or they're not going to part ways with Jacob deGrom. In the past, I've thought that it could be a good idea to trade Jacob deGrom, one, because of his age. He is 30 years old and he's going to become a free agent at 32 years old, so I'm not sure if locking up a 32-year-old to big money is necessarily a great idea, but that's a story for another day. And I think he would get a bigger package than Noah Syndergaard would. Syndergaard is younger, so I am in favor of them keeping him for the long haul, but again, story for another day. Instead, the New York Mets are going to explore other options when it comes to the trade deadline. They are still going to be sellers, but it's just depending on who they actually are going to sell. Some names that you could see be moved by this deadline is Zach Wheeler, Steven Matz, Familia, Ezra Cabrera, Todd Frazier, Wilma Flores, and Jerry Blevins. I am all on board for moving really any one of those guys. I think Zach Wheeler and Steven Matz have the biggest potential out of all those guys listed because they are still under contract for a while, and they are, I think, really nice middle or rotation guys. So if you do move away from one of them, you should be getting something decent back in return again. Probably not getting a top flight prospect for those guys that I just listed, even Steven Matz and Zach Wheeler, who are more cream of the crop out of that group. But you're you're not going to get like a star prospect that you would for Noah Syndergaard or Jacob DeGrom. You might get an okay player and someone that maybe you take a flyer on, but it's not going to be someone great. As Drupal Cabrera, Familia, and to a lesser extent Jerry Blevins, even though when he is going good, he is one of the best lefty specialists in the league, they're not going to get you all that much. In baseball today, they're not really paying a whole lot for rentals. But on the same token, it makes no sense for the Mets to hold on to these guys and let them walk for nothing at the end of the year. I know as Drupal Cabrera has overachieved, and he's actually been a pretty good Met since he's been brought in. I believe this is his third year with the team. And he has been very productive with the Mets over his time. But the, the thing is, you're not re-signing him. He's a veteran. If anything, you want to get younger and be better for 2019. He Yes, he does help you win games in 2018, but at this point, season's long over. You have to focus on getting younger and getting healthier. And there's also another thing that we haven't brought up yet about being more competitive in 2019. You have to spend money. Have to. This free agent class after this year is going to be insane. Bryce Harper, Manny Machado, to name a few. And the Mets have $92.5 million committed to payroll for 2019 that means they have a ton of room to spend if they want and if the Mets are serious about being contenders quote-unquote in 2019 go get Manny Machado I know there's gonna be a lot of teams bidding for him I know people like Harper better but personally I think I would go Manny Machado he can play short he can play third and he fills a need He's a right-handed bat. Most of the Mets guys really are, are lefties. When you think of Conforto and Nimmo, who you're really building around, yes, Cespedes is a righty, but that would be a great, great, great addition to this New York Mets lineup who struggles so much at hitting for power. And they're a team that should be a home run team, but they, they've struggled this year hitting for power. And Machado is just an all-around really good player and he's still young he's in the prime of his career you're not overpaying someone who's in their late 20s or early 30s for a couple of years as a stopgap guy no this is someone who you could build around for your future get rid of this fantasy that david wright is going to come back and play third base for the new york mets i love the guy probably the best position player the mets have ever had in their entire history but here's the thing he's not coming back 
He hasn't played since 2016. He hasn't played anything close to a full season in going on five years now. Time to move on. And yes, Todd Frazier is a pretty decent stopgap kind of guy, but he's not a long-term answer. He's a veteran who's going to hit in the low 200s, play good defense, and hit for a little bit of pop. That's an okay role player, but for what the Mets are asking for him to do, it's not anything close to what they actually need at the position. A guy like Machado makes a huge, huge difference. And if you are serious about contending, you have to make a big signing this offseason and spending money. I'm not saying that it's definitely going to happen. I can't guarantee that at all because at the end of the day, this is still the Wilpons running this team. And we know the Wilpons don't like to spend money. And it's extremely frustrating to continue to watch this team on a year-to-year basis and continue to see them struggle every year because of the lack of them willing to spend. Or they spend money on dumb things. Like if Daniel Murphy is your biggest free free agent acquisition this year, you're completely done. I liked Murphy as a Met. They moved on from him. And yes, he continued to, he exceeded any expectation, really. He picked up right where he left off from the 2015 playoffs. But at this point, He's hurt. He hasn't been very good this year. And bringing back an injury-prone liability at second base defensively would be exactly what the Mets would do, a player on the decline. Got to get away from that. Go younger. Sign guys who can help you down the road. The Mets, even with just DeGrom and Syndergaard at the top, they could add a piece, like maybe J.A. Happ on a one-year deal to bolster up the middle of the rotation. That's if you're moving Wheeler and Mats. I'm curious to see what this team does in the next few weeks as the trade deadline approaches and what their approach is for the 2019 season. If you're really serious about being contenders in 2019, stop being pretenders and go for it. If you agree with me, comment below. If you enjoyed the video, please like. If you liked it even more, please subscribe. Once again, I'm Matt O'Leary, and you can follow me on social media at MattOlearyNY on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll talk to you next time.